Let's bring our friend Tone in. Don't forget, Merrill Reese is also with us at fourth. Big sales. How you feeling today, sir? All good. Um, what'd you make of Chris Sims's comments? Listen, man. Here's the thing. You, I know you heard me earlier, man. I start, I started getting in his ass, man. But look, here's the thing. I look at it like this, right? And I think you and I spoke about this a while back. I'm a firm believer that there are there are a, 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 a subgroup, a subculture of sports people who quite literally couldn't wait for Jalen Hurts to slip. They couldn't wait for Jalen Hurts to have a setback because they wanted all the things they said about him pre-draft to be validated uh, to be validated throughout his football career. You know, Jalen Hurts has he had the perfect start to the NFL? No. As of right now, are things perfect for him? You know, as it stands with the Philadelphia Eagles, no. But the way I see it, a guy who was drafted in the second round, a guy who, in my opinion, has exceeded anybody's expectation, even this year. You know, he had he had 20 turnovers this season. Unacceptable. I would never make an excuse for that at all. But I also look at it like this. He did give you 38 touchdowns. He did give you over 4,000 yards of total offense, right? He did get you to the playoffs. You know, the, the the year prior, got you to a Super Bowl, played very well, still lost the game, though. You got to win it. The rookie year or the first year as a starter, I don't judge anybody by their first year. I'm very graceful to rookies or anybody who gets their first year starting. I'm very graceful to them. So for me, I just look at Chris Sims as a guy who's been living off of the lifeblood of not only his Jalen Hurts banter, but he's also been living off of the lifeblood of his own father. <laughs> look, man, I don't mean no disrespect. <laughs> he's great at what he does but come on man at some point somebody got to call it what it is they were talking about Kyler Murray all of a sudden he found a way to whip in Jalen Hurts you see what I'm saying there he see, knows I don't I, I think Chris I don't I don't think he gives a shit of course he doesn't about Jalen Hurts what I think he gives a shit about more is his take and his of position course. of course Jalen Hurts is just the vehicle for his opinions to be right exactly and here's the thing you say all the time, I'm. You're looking forward to being wrong. Yes, you absolutely. Want, I want you, this. Kid. You, you want, you want your opinion to change. He, he doesn't want his opinion to change. He doesn't. He I said the be, same thing. He wants to be validated. This. Lamar Jackson, after he took over for Flacco in Baltimore, I went like this. This guy's out of the league in five years. He can't hit the broadside of a barn. He, he against that Charger team in the playoffs, he was atrocious. Yeah, he was bad. And I'm like. Game. This guy sucks. Yeah. I think wasn't and next the, game? Year's the MVP. Yeah. I and I'm like this. Holy shit. I couldn't have been more wrong about a guy. Right. And, and and I think my problem with Phil Sims really is the fact that, damn, you can't give Jalen Hurts any credit. Any? Wow. He's the most overrated player in, in, in the league. <laughs> I wow. did not believe that. Come on. Really? No. Really? The, the most overrated player in the league with what? How many, how many people are in the NFL, Dan, right now? Give me a rough um, number. I think 1,500 people, 1,600 people are in the Jalen Hurts is the most overrated player out of 1,500 players? No. Come on, man. When every, when every week people have been killing him, every chance they get, they, they, they talk about the deficiencies in his game. They're, so Some people are so afraid to consider him a top 10 quarterback. You know, it's, it is what it is. I don't, I, I don't even want to spend too much time on him. The fact of the matter is, look, he's great at what he does, but he also sucked at what he did. And it, it is what it is. Here, here's here, here. Look, we've seen three different Hertzes. You agree? Yeah, but again, okay. The first, I can't. I can't. All right. I don't want you to quantify it. I no, asked no, you, no, did no. You, Do you see three different Hertzes so far? How about this? I saw. I, I Have saw you two, seen enough? I saw, I saw two different Hertzes. Okay, two different Hertz. Okay, I saw two. So, then what do you know? What you're looking at? I pay attention to the work ethic. I pay attention. I pay attention to the to the production, right? Okay. Let's let, let's let's talk about it. And again, you know, I feel like every quarterback has that season in their career where they have more interceptions than they normally would. But again, you know, I just want to use facts instead of my feelings to validate what I'm saying, because I think Jalen Hurts is a good quarterback. Do I think he's great? No. Do I think he has a lot to improve on? Absolutely. And the last thing I want to do is pretend like I didn't see the turbulence in 2023. I saw a guy who struggled. That's a fact. But I also saw a guy in 2023 and in 2022 who was completing 
66% of his passes. I saw a guy who's averaging about 3,800 3, yards passing and about 650 yards rushing over the past two years. I see a guy who's averaging about eight yards in the tenth over the past two years. I see a guy who's put up north of 30 touchdowns over the past two years. You know, in 2020, respectively. In 2023, he put up 38 touchdowns. In 2022, he gave you 35 touchdowns. Um, in 2022, only turned the ball over six times. In 2023, he turned the ball over 19 times. Not a good look whatsoever. And I'm not excusing the turnovers, but I'm also not gonna not gonna ignore production. You know, you know, Jalen Hurts was a guy that they that they considered wouldn't be accurate at all. They thought he was a guy that would never be able to throw or complete 65, 66% of his passes. They thought he would be a habitual 60 percenter. They Let me thought ask you that. something. What's the league average in completion percentage? Um, let me look it up for you right now. Give me one second. Because let me see here. Kind of dig deep. I'm curious to know what the league average is when it comes to completion percentage. Yale's convinced on Hertz. NFL League average. Let me double check here. Got to do a little digging. NFL League average. Completion percentage. There we go. All right. Season by season passing. All right. So <clears throat> in 2023, the league average was 64.5%. So he's about average of the league. At, at, at 66%, 65%. Yeah, just above, above average. Yeah, little just above, above average. Um, as, as far as as far as the yards, the average yardage in the 2023 season was 218 yards. In 2023, was he a 204? In 2023, he averaged. Give me one moment here. I think it's like 204, something like that. Let's see here. In 2023, Jalen Hurts averaged 200. Where is it? It's, there, there, there's no question. There's no question the turnovers. Here it is. He averaged he averaged 226 yards per game. Okay. So, so above above, above average. league average. So when it comes to completion percentage, he was above league average. When it comes to yards per game, he was above league average. Okay. I mean, he had a bad year. He turned the ball over. I'm not making excuses for that. I when don't. it comes to you know when it comes to his passer rating, um, in 2023, it was 89.1. So the you're league. a stout defender, st still of Hurts, being a guy who's going to take this team back to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I am. All right. I am. I, 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 am. I had someone ask me this question earlier. What's the ceiling? At his current rate, with what they want him to do with the hiring of Kellen Moore, 15 years, 14 years, I think they'll be in the playoffs. I don't think they'll ever get back to the play of the Super Bowl, not with that style of play. Um, now, if you give me 22, it's about a 10 year career, 11, something like that. Three Super Bowl appearances. Maybe you get one. That's my take on him. That's my ceiling. If you're telling me the 23 is going to be what he's going to look like the rest of the way out in his career, you ain't getting back there, dude. Because you ain't proven to me you can. And again, you're going to go, well, Seals, it's one year playing like that. I know. Yeah, I mean, that's an opinion. But ultimately, but so far, what he's done in that one year, I didn't see anything that made me believe that he's going to take a team to a Super Bowl. Look, all you can do is go off. I did. With, all you can do is go off what you've seen, right? That's all you can 22, do. 22, I did. All you, can, all you can do is go off of what he put on tape. Um, he's get he has a very a very small sample size of production. That's all you can go off of, right? Let me ask you this question: Do you think Jalen Hurts is going to turn the ball over twenty times again next season? No. Let me put it to you, let me put it to you this no, way: No, but I do think there's going to be a good chance of high turnovers, and I'll tell you why. Kelsey's a factor. That matters. Back. Who's blocking in the backfield with your backs picking up blitzes? You think that's that that rate is going to stop? It's not. He's going to be under center, which means this: he's not going to have the same time to process, and he's not. 
when you're under center, you've got to get back immediately. Is his footwork great? Eh, suspect at times. Sometimes he's got great feet. He's yeah, got I agree a lot with of that. work to do there. I agree with that. Okay. So when you're asking him to do some things that he's not done if you're going to put him under center too. Now you're putting the element back of you're putting an element back of surprise when you put him under center, like we said last week. Right. However, um Kellen Moore's last two stops had no impact on developing a quarterback. Dak led the NFL in picks. Herbert wasn't great last year. Now he got hurt. We don't know what that could. Plus, Staley's a horrific coach. So they had just as much chaos in that building as I think the Eagles did when it came to their coaching and their their chaos. But to sit here and go like this, Kellen Moore is going to turn the guy around when in the last two years I haven't seen him do anything for a quarterback yet. I, I just I think Herbert's going to be in line for an MVP uh, candidate because of Harbaugh in the room. So when it comes to Kellen Moore, right, and ultimately – you're, and I don't know. No, yeah, of course, of course. You know, neither of us know. You know, I can only I, I can only go by so far on my takes, and you know, likewise with you. Um, as far as Kellen Moore goes, and when it comes to developing a quarterback and working with a quarterback, I mean, granted, I do understand that in 2022, Jack Prescott had 15 turnovers in 12 games played. Um, that's unacceptable as well. Also, and, and look, this. The last thing I thought I would do is be defending Dak Prescott. That's the last thing I thought I would be doing on this show. But I'm only doing this, you know, in order to validate uh, Kellen Moore's time um, in Dallas. So Kellen Moore was the uh, was the OC there, I believe, for five seasons, four or five seasons. I think so. Um, Sounds right. Uh, he, so he basically was there from 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, 2018, right? Under Kellen Moore in 2018, Dak Prescott. And again, I know he's – him and Hurts played a position differently. But I just want to talk about the growth that Dick Prescott's experienced under Kellen Moore. Completed 67% of his passes, which is up from 2017. In 2017, he only completed 62%. When Kellen Moore got there, that jumped to 67%. His yards in 2017 was 3,324. That jumped to 3,885. What year is this? 2018. Okay, I believe is that, Moore, and that's the year Amari got there. Uh, is it? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, go right. ahead. I, I, I could double check it though. Let me see. Because Dak had a career year this past season without him. Right, I agree. But I also think Dak has, you know, I think he's matured and, and, yep. and also Kellen yep. Moore got better too. Yep, yep. Okay, yeah. So in 2018, yes, 2018, Amari Cooper got there. He was traded. Was it wasn't mid season. It looks like mid season. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he was traded there midseason. He spent six games in Oakland and then nine games in Dallas. Yep. Um. So, yeah, where was I? Uh, so in 20, uh, 2018, uh, yeah, his Dak percentage, put, his completion percentage went up, I think, because Amari got there. It's, fa it's, 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 it's fair enough, but you got to maintain it, right? Yeah. So in 2019, um, 16 games played, 65% completion percentage under Kellen Moore, 4,900 passing yards, 30 passing touchdowns, only 11 interceptions. Great year. Um, 20, 2020, he had the injury where he only played five games, obviously. Yep. Um, 2021, 68% completion percentage. CD, CD's there. 4,400 passing yards, 37 passing touchdowns, you know, 10, 10 interceptions. I mean, he's had it. He's he's shown an ability to keep a quarterback playing if at a pretty keep high that level. Interception thing around 10 to 12, 13 in there. I'm good with that. Me too. If you're over 4,500 yards passing, I'm good with that. Yeah. Five or 600 attempts. Yeah, yeah, because for me, it's all about your ratio, right? I don't want Jalen Hurts Absolutely at Absolutely correct. Yeah, I don't want Jalen Hurts at a two-to-one ratio. No, I need like the year that Brady and everyone says he sucked, he threw the ball 702 times. The he most had nine the, picks. The most ever. We've ever we've never seen a quarterback yeah. throw the ball. And he had nine times. interceptions that year. People went like this. He sucked. I'm like, no, you he threw didn't. the ball 700 times. And threw nine interceptions. And only. threw nine picks that year, and they sucked. I'm like, I don't think so. Right. So again, you know, Jalen Hurts. I look at it like this, man. You know, I'm 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 a Jalen Hurts guy. I've never really been shy about that, but I've also never been shy about criticizing him as well. I think I think at this point you can tell I'm pretty fair. I try to be fair about Jalen Hurts. I have no problem criticizing the missteps. I have no problem criticizing the failures. But I guess what I don't like is when people are so dismissive of the strides and the distance he's traveled to the point where they're willing, to the point where they're willing to call him overrated. That's when a guy when a guy in his rookie yeah. year 
Like you know, let's let's just let's just call it what he's, it is. I mean, not overrated. Of course not. But let's but but again, we're we're, we're humoring it, right? Twenty twenty, Jalen Hurts completed fifty two percent of his passes through four games played. In twenty twenty one, completed sixty one percent of his passes through fifteen games played. In twenty twenty two, completed sixty six percent of his passes. And in twenty twenty three, completed sixty five percent of his passes. I mean, every year he's produced more and more and more and more. Did he have a year where he turned the ball over more than normal? But I also think there was a lot of circumstances involved. Nonetheless, though, he made those decisions. He fumbled the rock. He has to control that. And that's on him at the end of the day. He he was not a good decision maker in 2023. That's a fact. But when I look at the production, I see a guy that's produced more and more and more every single year. Did he have a setback? Sure. But ultimately... And it's the NFL, baby. Guys are going to catch up to what you're doing, and you got to react. Read and react. You know this game, Dan. <laughs> Read and react. I like it. Okay, let's get to this thing now. You know, not a lot of people hitting on it. This is the first time we have. Yes. Um, The Eagles have a big decision to make here by May 2nd. Mm -hmm. If they're going to pick up Devontae Smith's fifth-year option. Oh, yeah. That means that in 2025 – the base will go to 15 million. Should the Eagles extend Smith this offseason or wait? You know how he loves to get in the room early. Dude, and I gotta tell you, I've gone back and forth on this. I I don't like to do that. I don't like to I know. be on the fence. You're very you like to, you like to, you like to be on I whatever side you're on. That. I know. Okay? And I can tell, I can tell when you when it bothers you. Like, it's, you know what, I, I I'm I'm going, I'm like. Man, I want, I need the time, but I don't want this kid all of a sudden. Landon Dickerson, him, Devontae, I'm paying a bunch of dudes. Josh Sweat, I got to decide on $20 million contracts. Jesus, Tone, I don't want to be, I don't want to be dealing with three $20 million contracts. Yeah, here, here's the thing. I think the Eagles, because you bring up a very good point with Devontae. If you pick up the fifth, if you pick up the, uh, the fifth year option, that fifteen point five million goes right in your cap, right, right at in it. Cap. So if they're trying to avoid the cap headache, they have to. This may sound crazy to people, but I need you to follow me. And in order for them to avoid the massive cap hit in twenty twenty five, when they pick, if if they were to pick up the fifth year option, they actually had to decline the fifth year option, then extend them from there. M meaning, to your point, they need to pay him now. Okay, because they need to pay him now. Because if they don't pick that option out, he's a free agent next offseason. Correct. No. Correct. 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 Because that so, option, so, yeah. Right, so to your point. So he'll be playing his final year on May 2nd. Right. If they don't extend, they don't pick that thing up. Right. They're going to have to This pick is it. his last year in Philly. Right. If they don't pick it up and they plan on keeping him, they got to pay him. Again, I'm thinking about the, I'm thinking about the books, right? I'm all about picking up the fifth year option, but I'm also thinking about the cap hit that's going to have. So they, if they're if they're worried about the cap hit, they're going to have to find a way to restructure the extension with that fifth year option, if that's even a possibility. Because I think Devontae should be here. I'm not implying they should think about moving him. Never that. I'm a Devontae guy. Me personally, and again, this is just me personally. I would buy a Devontae jersey before an AJ Brown jersey. That's just me though. But nonetheless, if you, if you pick the option up, you got two years to deal with. You're, right, you, you, pick, you have you have the two you have this year and twenty five. If right. you don't, so what are you going to pay him then? If you want to extend him now, so here's the thing: as of right now, his current market value stands at nineteen point nine million per season, which is quite frankly the franchise tag. So what they're going to have to do is um, that's when. I think I think you have to cut Avanti Maddox. I think Avanti Maddox is cut. I'm not I'm, I'm not keeping his contract on the books. That can free up okay. about nine million on your cap. Bayard gives you another thirteen. Bayard gives you another thirteen. That's twenty two. Twenty two million right there that you just freed up on top of the money you already have. So again, what do you do with Reddick? I'm gonna make him an offer. Red, Red, Reddick Reddick gets you the money you need for him. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna make him an offer. And never say, listen, this is this is what we're trying to do. <laughs> You're gonna I'm low willing, ball a guy who gave you 30 sacks. I'm not gonna low ball. I'm gonna all give right. him a fair offer. But it's remember, remember, it's all about that base. Hey, hey Don Cor oh, it is. It's all Don about that Corleone. base. So this is what You're I'm saying. Make you an offer I can't refuse. I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. Who's going who's going to 
Who's going to deny $25 plus million dollars up front? Who's going to deny that? In your pocket. You played this game. Money in your pocket is better than money that's on the, uh, on the books, right? So again, I think in order to free up that cap space that Reddick's contract is holding up, if they want to keep him and if he and if they work something, they, they gotta they gotta extend him. If they don't, they gotta trade him and get the money off. They gotta make a decision. To your point, time is wasted. So whatever move they make, it has to free up that 21 million on the cap. They got they gotta relieve pressure right there. But the which bottom line is you think on that defense or which guy do you think on that roster is gonna determine Smith's future when it comes to what they do. Look, Smith's future is in Philly. They want him, and mm-hmm. so does everyone else. But there's, it's either Reddick or do you think it's Bradbury that is mm. going to determine? Because That's I'll tell question. you what I would do, Tone, to get to maybe get a little less money on my on my cap too. And I'm glad to see it's two forty three and it's two instead of two thirty nine or two forty. So mm-hmm. that gives them roughly around three and a half more. So that's 26 to 27 million. So you're getting up there a little more. Bayard being out, 36. You're starting to climb back up there as you're getting closer to the draft. I would do this with Bradbury. I would look for a trade partner, pick up half the contract, mm. get half the half the salary off the books. I get a roster spot and I get a draft pick. I go into the draft and I get a rookie or I get Jalen Johnson and give money to Jalen Johnson because tomorrow we're going to find out if the bears are going to tag his ass. Sneed, mm. I think is going to get tagged in Kansas city. It's a chance. You know, me and Rob was talking about that. Like, could they eat? Are you going to tag Chris Jones? Or are you going to tag Le- 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 LeJarrius Sneed? Who are you going to do? That's a good question because I don't know if they can keep both. They can't. They can't keep both. I don't know if they can. I really they got don't think $23 million, I believe, in cap space. Okay? He's going to command 31 but he's 29 Okay? Yeah, are you going to tag situation. him? Or are you going to tag Sneed? I think you tag Sneed, the younger guy, and he is, he is younger. you move on. I'm glad I'm not with them. That's a tough situation. Legere Sneed is a young guy, 27 years old, entering his prime right now, or maybe in it right now. Uh, a guy, but the thing about that Chris Sneed, Jones' kid's a bitch, though, man. I know, I know. He literally wrecked the Super Bowl. He, he that um, he had one of the biggest plays in the game, that fourth quarter game, fourth quarter play where right. they didn't block him. I'll put it to you this way. Put it to you this way. You and I talk about this all the time. You build your team from the inside out. Hey, yep, that's right. But that, but what do you they say show, all the time about them premium positions like corner? That's true, and that's and that's and that's the rub, right? That's the rub right there. So I'm torn in that situation. Um, I'll put it to you this way: I'm going to go with the tried and true formula: build your team from the inside out. You build your team from the inside out, and trust that what you've done previously. We're drafting DBs and developing them and spags. Trust that he can coach up whoever's back there. Or offer him a contract that is offer re, restruct. Can you restructure Mahomes again? They just signed him to a new extension. They just signed him to a new one. Can they do that? I listen, I know they did this when they gave him the first initial five hundred thousand, five hundred million dollar deal mm-hmm. within a month, so they could get Orlando Brown in the room. They 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 restructured the contract. Gave Brown the money, put him on the team. I think he came over from Cleveland. Does that sound right? Um, or Baltimore? No, he came from Baltimore. Baltimore. Came over from Baltimore, and they put him in the building because Mahomes restructured the contract. He's, and the crazy thing is, though, he's not even there anymore. They got rid of him like a year later. They did. Later. He's in Cleveland now, I think. Right, right. Um, but to your point about the Eagles situation, um, I think Devontae Smith, if they want to get ahead of the market, Howie Roseman is, is notorious for paying guys early. Um, if he wants to get ahead of this thing, I think they got to, and look, I'm not a capologist. It's a tough one. It's a tough look, call here. Yeah. Look, I'm not a capologist, right? I'm still understand. I'm still understanding the science of it. I want to be, I want to be very transparent about that. So three years, 3000 yards receiving. Yeah. 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 You know, <laughs> listen, man, three years over 3000 yards receiving 19 touchdowns over the past three seasons, averaged 13 yards of reception, averaging um, over 75 catches. A year. 
Exactly. Exactly. You know, you can't, you, you, you can't, they're not going to let him walk out the door. That's not happening. He's going, he's going to get paid somehow, some way. Again, um, I think Howie and the cap hits might the, afford you it, it's the about ability the to hits. keep both them guys. See, I think this is AJ Brown. You know how you were saying next year's the year you really look at that. I think next, I think he's playing in Philly one more year. It's a, it's a strong possibility, and a lot of people don't want to really acknowledge that simple that, that simple notion. But at the end of the day, they have so much money tied up on the offense side of the ball. If you want to get that defense, and here's another thing that people overlook when you talk about one aspect of the team. When you're talking about Devontae Smith and Landon Dickerson and all those guys, Jordan Milata's contract is going to be coming up soon. When you talk about all those guys, you also got to say, my defense. I got to put some money over there as well. So this is where we start to look at Jalen Hurts and say, look, we're going to have to take a piece away from you. You're going to have to step your weight up. You're going to have to prove guys like Chris Sims wrong. OK, you're going to have to prove guys like Tone the shells, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think I, I think Devontae Smith is I think Devontae Smith is their guy. I think how he's got to look at Jalen and go, hey, I don't want to look at my owner and have to explain 20 turnovers again. Flat out, flat out. Um, I don't think he does that again. But overall, it always come back to the money at the end of the day. And the money says they got to move. Bradbury out the building. I'm sorry. Bradbury got to go. Hassan Reddick is either you take this extension that we're offering or we're trading you. It's very simple. Are you giving them more? I'm giving I'm giving them a little bit more. A little bit more, but I'm not giving them 20. I'm not giving them 20. Because there's the $20 million guy at Von Miller and Trey Hendrickson, and then there's a big drop-off to like a $16 or $17 million guy, right? I'm looking at Hassan Ruddick and say, look, I'm willing to give you somewhere in between there. I don't think you're a tournament million guy, but I definitely believe that you deserve a little bit more cash. So he right now he's at 15. Listen, Hassan, I'm willing to push it to 17 and a half, maybe. But other than that, if you're trying to, if it, you're not, you're not going to hamstring me. I'm just not. Here's here's the problem, and Yale's right. Here's the problem you have to concern yourself with, Tone. The things that you hired him to do and the reason you signed him mm -hmm. was to improve your pass rush from the uh, to 2020 season. Right. What you don't want to do is, hey, I did everything that you asked me to do. Everything. And you're going to come in here with a, with a $2 million um, raise. That's why it's important to find out what he found out on that open market. We're going to know all this very soon. You Remember, think that's something that you're telling. Hey, go find out and see what your value is. When the people in the building should know what they have their own internal value on you are is Insul insulting. This is I didn't draft you. This is business. What do I owe? Oh, you? Okay, I, you're you're not wrong. Insulting? I no, feel like it's. I, I, feel, it. I feel like hey, it's more about insulting. This? You know how the team fires back? You think it's insulting that we signed you? And no one else was going to give you 15 a year. You know we're the one that gambled. I didn't see a lot of teams giving you $15 million to sign. You were cut. Remember that. That was no trade. Carolina let them right. walk. Let them walk out the door. Okay. Two teams. You don't let, you let premium pass rushers walk out the door tone in two places. Right. Unless there's a problem. Like, and, and, and again, right? This ain't this ain't got nothing to do with feelings. This is me thinking about the cat. The roster and trying to and, and trying to rebuild this defense. This defense needs a lot of work, a lot. And I'm not and, and I and I'm not going to undersell that. And I'm not and I'm not going to placate to anybody to make it seem like oh we're going to we're going to get there faster than what we think. You guys, don't worry, it's not that bad. No, this shit is bad, and a lot of stuff needs to get handled. That defense has to be addressed. It has to be addressed. It has to be addressed. And also, I look at it like this too, right? You got Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, and those guys in that middle. Josh Sweat, those guys got to step up. You can't have, listen, you can't, everybody on your line can't be premium. It's the reality. Some guys going to have to, some guys are going to have to play above their pay grade. This is the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Some, you can't have all pros and pro bowls every position. We were, you see, we were spoiled last year or in 2022. We were spoiled. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't have all those premier guys at that one position. Sacks. It's, it's not, it's not realistic. I mean, that's not even realistic. 70 sacks. Not. 
So uh, I look at it it's like clearly this. one of the best Super Bowl rosters I've ever seen. One of, one of the best that couldn't get it done. You know, th- you know what I would say? That that 2022 and that um, undefeated Patriots team are two of the best rosters I've seen in the past 20 years. That and I would done. even say that this 49er roster that was in that Super Bowl against yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. I'll tell you, that's just as much of a letdown as the Eagle letdown was because. You got all them high price guys. You're right. only five hundred thousand dollars over the cap. Hey, I mean uh, under the cap. Listen here, man. It's tight. It's hey, tight. You guys have a lot of decision making to do. Exactly. You got Brandon Ayuk so, to decide on. Exactly. So again, you know, we marry ourselves to these players without thinking about the repercussions of maintaining them on the roster. And then when you say, "Listen, they may have to consider consider moving on from them." No, you're crazy. You're a psycho. Why would you move on from Hassan Reddick? He's your best defensive player. Okay, but the def- what difference did he make last year when we needed when, when we needed Matt? And look, a lot of things happen. Matt Patricia, all that kind of stuff. Nothing is ever as simple as we make it. But overall, I'm looking at the bigger picture when it comes to this defense, not just one guy's Peyton, not not just one guy's pocket. I'm looking at the bigger picture, and I'm making him once he comes back from whatever finding out what what, what the market tells him. We're going to talk about it again. And this is what it's going to be. If you don't like it, then we're going to have to move on from you. And it is what it is. Who was that some, guy that was on earlier? Uh, that was our guy, Dave Zangaro from NBC Sports Philly. Okay, so he works with uh, Big Barrett. Yes, yes, correct. Man, you were going somewhere so good and you didn't stay at it. I know, time. Time, uh, no, you didn't stay on it because you didn't stay there on it. Because when he said, you know, they've kind of limited Nick with all these coordinator hires. And then I started as soon as before he even said it, then you kind of broached it. I said it. I said it. I'm sitting here watching it going, why are they protecting Nick? You heard me, right? I said, I said, are, are, are they hiding him? What did I what did I write down here? I said protecting him. I said, what is Eagle management protecting him by hiring these these experienced OCs and DCs and not giving him a job title so that when someone comes up and that guy, what's his name? Dave what? Zingaro. He said this. He goes, What is going to be the metric to measure him by? Just wins and losses? Is that all the Eagles want? Because that's what everybody brings up on why he should have kept his job because of the 667. That's the only thing they bring up. So is that his – if that's the case, they're either doing this, they're setting him up for failure, or if this thing – because this thing doesn't turn around, his job is going to determine by how many wins they get. Exactly, which is, which is why – If I, they have an under 500 record, he's gone. Which is why I said – by what is when is the trade down normally week eight week nine something, something like, like right in the yeah eight something nine because right the buy usually in there a league buy if the if the eagles are under 500 by that point he's out how about if they're 500 at that point so that would mean they're what four and four something like that something like that i still think he's gone i think he's gone they need to be or I put it to this way: We always talk about what it would be if he gets fired. In order for him to keep his job, I think they only they're on they can only be afforded maybe two losses. By the by the by the bot uh, by the halfway point of the seat or the trading deadline, they got to be six and two, or even six and three. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what when they get their uh, bye week. If it's in the middle of the week, we're going to know that that's going to be a, or middle of the schedule. That's going to be an evaluation period. Because again, you're only you can't gauge him off of the flow of the offense anymore. You can't gauge him over the defense. Obviously, you never have. You only if you're only gauging him off of wins and losses. You can't deve- you can't gauge him off of Jalen's development. That's in someone else's hands. Exactly. So if so again, all you can really gauge him on is it's the win column and the lose and the loss column. If he's 500 or less, I will not be surprised if he gets axed. And then Kellen Moore takes over as the interim head coach. And then he, because he's already running the offense, it's the perfect, it's, it's, it's a seamless transition. Seamless. They're hedging their bet like they always do.
Yep, that's exactly what this is coming down to. Get this. I've never, you know, Mike McCarthy's not just being engaged on wins and losses. He's being engaged on the fact that they gave um, Dak Prescott a career year. Mm -hmm. That's why he's back also. Yes, I believe that as well. I believe that. Um, I think I, I think McCarthy, believe it or not, he's in a safer position than Nick Sirianni. Oh, by far. Because the head coach, I mean, because the owner came out and because it's my guy. We never had any thought of firing him. Right. He's my guy. It was right at, it was like three days after he goes, this is my guy. We had no intention of getting rid of right. him or moving off. I've never, I heard what's his name asked the question when he was at the little powwow thing, the little soiree they had when Howie and his boy were sitting there taking questions. What's your, I mean, head coach being asked, what's your job? Holy cow. It looked like a funeral. It looked like a funeral. Like there wasn't, in my opinion, I didn't, I didn't get a feel or a sense of this, this unwavering. <laughs> I thought this, it felt like he was on trial. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get a sense for this unwavering conviction. I didn't. I got a sense for a guy that, cause think about all he kept saying, listen, you know, when a guy wins this many games, you know, you can't, you can't let him walk out the door. That's all that, that's all he kept talking about was the games. And he you notice about, that's kind of what that guy Dave said earlier today. He goes, you know, what's he going to, what's going to be the metric? paraphrasing here on how you're going to evaluate him. It's funny now that how he said the same thing at that press conference, you can't fire a guy with that kind of wins and losses. So what they've done is they've taken all responsibility away of developing any players uh -huh. and said, Nick, you're going to be gauged on how this team wins and loses. And that's the only metric. And that's, that's pretty frightening. That's very frightening because a lot can happen. That right? means you have no job security. Right, a player can drop the ball. Um, a fumble can happen. You know, there's so many things that can happen in a football. You played this game. So many things can happen in the middle of a game. Injury, that doesn't, right? Injury, and it's not your coach's fault. There's so, so what much if Jalen gets hurt, misses like five games, and they're two and they're and they're one and one and six? That's a good question. I can't even begin to think that far ahead. <laughs> I don't. If I don't he, want to think. Like well, that. I mean, if he's gauged by wins and losses, <laughs> to your point, and yeah, hurt right. misses some time. You're right. And he's one in six. You're right, man. Listen, he better make sure everybody eat their Wheaties. He better make he better make sure the Gatorade is nice and full. No, no cramps. Now, how about <laughs> this? Does that make him? What do you mean, Mitel? Okay. Anyway, what the, the hey? Does that mean <laughs> that they're going to oh. be more cautious and protective of Hertz this year? Mm, you. What do you mean? Nick's job is determining on that guy's health. Pretty much. So wait. Also, oh, are you implying RPO that, stuff? Yeah, you know, uh, I don't want to put this guy's ass in a position where. I see what you're doing. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, hey, I need him out there. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Because Hertz's success this year is going to be collateral damage for Nick if they lose. Mm. And this is why he's going to get the shrap medal. And this is why I feel like this situation is doomed. For disaster. Yeah, totally. Because you cannot fire a, a coach's entire staff and keep him and think we're not going to have questions. What what ha, have you ever seen that before? Where they fired no. a guy's whole staff and he stayed? No. And they brought in and they brought in more people around him that they brought in people around him that had I've more seen experience. Staff than stay and head coaches fired. Yes, we've seen that. We just saw the opposite happen. Yeah. Now they let him keep one guy, Kevin Petulo, yeah. one guy. But other than that, for the most part, they off his entire staff. Remember when what's his name? Jason Garrett got fired in Dallas. They kept Kellen Moore. They kept Kellen Moore. They kept Kellen Moore. They didn't and, fire the OC. And they McCarthy kept him there. And McCarthy inherited Kellen Moore. And then Correct. you know the and then the rumors came out about Kellen Moore and McCarthy not really being on the same page. And then that's when Kellen Moore left. So I don't think Nick Sirianni is in the optimal position for his career. He's not because, because ultimately he's been engaged on once or two, on two simple metrics, wins and losses. And that, my friend, is a very, is very shaky ground to be on. Very shaky. Here's one for you. Concerns Howie. How much is Howie going to pay for a running back? Is it going to be – Cash, or is it going to be draft capital? 
Mm. Are they going to spend a high draft pick for a running back? Or are they going to spend a lot of money? Now here, I can't just have a guy not just replace DeAndre Swift in his numbers. Right. I need a guy who, if we're going to have a player back there, can block as well. So that usually comes with experience. What will how what was that thing you were saying about how he has to be different this offseason? How we were talking many, about he's got to he, be like do something different. He has to buck his strength. He has okay. to buck his strength. He can't he can't he can't approach it. He can't approach it the same exact way he normally does. He can't what's he say, do here with the running back position? So to your point. I think pass protection from that running back position is almost more important than whatever production they provide because the running back position gave you nothing in pass protection over the past couple of years. It really did. Um, more, but more notably in 2023. Um, if I'm thinking about the way the market is set up and the way teams and organizations lead wide view the position, I wouldn't be surprised if they sign a guy and draft the guy. I think they may do because they only have they only really they really only have like one running back on the roster that's that we that, that we know of. Um, other than that, they they they're gonna have to either they're gonna have to pay a guy and maybe draft a guy, maybe fifth round, something like that, fourth or fifth round. To what I don't see Derek Henry's number. He was at four and a half million last week. It's at ten million now. Well, you I, I, you I you and I were just talking about this. We've been talking about it for the past well, couple well, weeks. What happened over the weekend? I have no idea what happened. It jumped. Astronomically, I wonder if he took a physical and passed it around to um, and and his agent has been going around going that he took a physical and he's top health Sills. right now. Sills. Healthy as he's been the offseason in any year in the last five years. I had to be so because it has to be something with his health. Sills, that jump is yeah. not normal. No, I had never seen you that. Know, you know, it was jump- three days. Right. To, all right. If, if it was four million, then it jumped to six. Okay. All right. That's one thing. It jumped a. It jumped from four. Barb, million, I think it's a fitness issue. It jumped from four million to almost eleven million. Has to be. That's insane. Yeah, and the market. There's so many players on it. Why would yours go up six million? Correct. Correct. I mean, there's there's younger players on it. Why is but yours up there? I mean, you're thirty years old. Right, Josh, listen, Josh Jacobs and Derrick Henry have the same market values at 10 million. Derrick Henry is at 10.3, Josh Jacobs is at 10.6. Josh Jacobs is only 26 years old. Derrick Henry's 30. How did that but is it because the projections went up 4 million for the cap? Did the cap change that? Saquon Barkley's the cap changed it. It's the cap that possibility. changed. It. That's the that's the only thing that significant happened it over went the weekend. From two thirty nine to two forty three. Did the official franchise tax come out too? Yes. Well, well, I think that comes. I think the I think the NFL Players Association. We're going to know that tomorrow because tomorrow's tag day. So okay. the NFL PA will release it, but the projections. If you go to the NFL Players Association, they kind of have projections. Tomorrow's official tag day. Okay. The numbers for each position will come out tomorrow. As a matter of fact, now think about it. Okay, so yeah, so mostly every so DeAndre Swift, Austin Eckler, Tony Powell. They all went up, didn't they? All, all those guys are in the same range. Six six between six and seven million. What's what's number now? Six point seven. I think it was six point five at one point, right? Yeah. So it his went up a little bit, but Derrick Henry is the biggest jump I've ever seen. Has to be something with his fitness. Has to be health wise. It's, it's the only and the and and the and the um yeah. cap going up has to be a combination. Yeah, because right now that that narrative that we talked about making a move for him is out the window. Let me That's say not- this to you. Oh yeah, completely out. He's not. He, I mean, but 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 I would say this: What teams out there going to pay him ten with a big quarterback? That's a contender. You think the Bills would do that? The rumor is they're forty-four the rumor million is, under the. They're forty-four over. The rumor is the Ravens and the Eagles are supposed to be the top landing spots. That's what that's what I'm hearing. But I don't believe the Eagles won not one bit. I'm paying ten. Then they're again, not paying ten million. I'll tell you what, man. He's a. He, it's the money. It's too much. It's too much. It's too because much. Then, and then, then we go back to this. You're gonna pay him ten. 
You got Devontae's decision to be made. You got Hassan's decision to be made. Your two corners. But here's another thing as well. Your rookies. Here's another thing that I think that we need to consider as well. Because of the nature of the position, and because these teams have no problem drafting a running back and getting production out of them, whatever we see for running backs as far as estimated market value, and because there's so many of them on the market, I wouldn't be surprised if all those guys get maybe two or three million less than the estimated average. So, for example, they got Derrick Henry at 10 right now. I wouldn't be surprised if Derrick Henry actually gets maybe eight. They got Austin Eckler at 7.5 or 7.4. I wouldn't be surprised if Austin gets maybe six. You think he'd sign a one-year deal, Henry? That's a good question. I think it depends on the situation. Behind that old line, he get 15, 1,600 yards. If Swift can do that, Henry's a 10 times better player than Swift. Yeah, easily. If First of all, Derrick Henry's never had an O-line the whole time he's been in the NFL. Ever. All, never. Worst ever. Never. And he's, no. he's, he's done what he's done. Kelly Green's got a good call here. Let's see. Saints here. are a billion dollars over the cap. A what? Oh, no. What I'm saying, you know, I, I'm the figure of speech. They're like a, they're so far, like 67 million over the cap. What if they cut Camara? He's a $20 million guy or $17 million guy. Thanks. They that's, may that's, cut his ass. Plus, with all point. that shit that went on last year. That's a good point. That's a, this running back market is about to be maybe the largest we've seen in a while. Hey, more the merrier drops the number. The more the merrier. It's a buyer's market. The more houses on the block, the less That's right. The, the less the less they cost. That's right. How about this one here? What will how we spend at the linebacker position? High draft pick? I think high draft pick or big money. He needs to he, I'm going to be honest with you. He needs a veteran in there. He needs somebody to know what they're doing. I I can't waste time on the draft pick at linebacker. I can't. Maybe you draft the guy to develop him maybe, but I can't waste time. I need to get a free agent. I need you to go get somebody legit. I heard Andrew Van Ginkle may be an option. He played for the Dolphins under Fangio. Um, had one of his better years under him. Um, you and I discussed Willie Gay. Uh, who else could potentially be available? And, and, and Gay could be a casualty of what's going on between Jones and Sneed. Uh, who else we got here? You got uh, you got Josie Jewell, who played for – where are we? He played for Tony, the Broncos. you got to hang between four and five and a half million. You can't get over that because I don't, unless he's going to change his mentality. Because, listen, there's this guy in their four and the five range. Listen, there's this guy. His name's Josie Jewell, played for the Broncos, five year pro, drafted in the fourth round, went to Iowa. Uh, his estimated market value is seven point six million per year. He could be an option. Uh, man, I wouldn't be. This 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 is, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough because again, it's all about the money you got left. How you're going to allocate it? Who you're going to restructure? I think they need to go veteran at linebacker. Yeah, not that rubber duck named Nicobe Dean. Um, hey, final question for you. We're going to get yes. um, <clears throat> our friend Merrill Reese on. Yes. Do the Eagles need to draft a quarterback or sign a veteran one? A quarterback or cornerback? Quarterback. Quarter. Behind Hurts. Oh, that's a good question. Because Mar Mariota's contract voids, I think, on Thursday or Wednesday. Yeah, something, something like that. that. It, voids, it voids this week. I want a veteran behind him. I don't think he brought anything to the team at all. Not, not, even, not even conversation on the sideline with Hurts. Yeah, not I even, feel yeah. better with Mitch you back there. Right, it's insane. Um, see, the veteran quarterback market is very slim, very slim. I would prefer a veteran back there. I would prefer, but the money is the is the tough part. You know, you got, you got like Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett back. There. I would like to have Jacoby Brissett. That's who I want. That's who I've been looking at. Not anybody else. I think Jacoby Brissett is the guy that I want behind Jalen Hurts. It's got to kind of mimic what he does. He's the closest to his skill set. Yep. He's a veteran. He's proven that he's capable of winning you two, three, four games. Hey, you know who I really would want? The kid that backs up uh, Lamar and Baldwin. Oh, yeah. Uh, Snoop Huntley. Yeah. Tyler Huntley. Yeah, yeah. He's good, that but he's going to get some money. Kid. 
He's going to get paid this offseason. He's hey, somebody's, somebody's going to he get some money. Play. Yeah, he can't. He can't he can play. I'd love to have him on my team. Yeah, but give me uh, like our role with your He's going to make some money. That's an $8 million a year deal there. He's going to get something in that room like $8 million. Yeah, and look, Jacoby Brissett right now, let's see here. Is he in see, Washington? He was in Washington. He's 31 years old. They don't have his annual average salary up, but in the one year he was in Washington, they gave him an average salary of $8 million with $7.5 million guaranteed. It's kind of high. It is kind of high. Which is higher than what he got in in, in in uh in Cleveland that one that was the biggest contract he ever got in terms of uh, that Joshua Dobbs kid, like five star says here. Dobbs is he's he's a smart dude. Um, he's tricky man. Only because I did like what I saw, but at the same time, I know he fell off the planet. He fell off like, like three days, like a meteor after that. He fell off like a meteor, but I think that's because the they had film. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, no, it's totally true. Right, right, but um. Look, as a backup, you could do a lot worse. Oh yeah, I want, I, but I want a veteran back there. Yeah, remember, it's a backup, not a starter. So absolutely, I want my right, tone. I'm gonna. We're gonna talk to Merrill. You know what Merrill said? Merrill liked to see Jason Kelsey retire. That's gonna be the first question out of the out of the um, the deal here. Then I'll ask him. Did you hear about... real quick? Did you hear the conversation he had with Shaq? You no. know. Kelsey and Shaq, well, you know, they were talking on his podcast on Kelsey on Shaq's podcast, and Shaq was like, Listen, man, you know, you got the ring, you got the accolades, you ain't got nothing left to prove. Don't make the same mistake I did. You know, I I kept playing, I lost my family, I lost my wife, I lost, I lost everything. Now, now I'm in a hundred thousand square foot house by myself. So whatever, whatever decision, whatever, Brady. whatever decision you do make, think about your family first. Look at Brady. When I heard that conversation, it hey, shifted. It shifted me. Let me tell you this. I think he's going. I think he may. I think he may retire. Let me tell you something about that whole thing. Tom Brady sacrificed his family to continue playing for one more year, and it cost him his family. Mm -hmm. And Tony, I'll tell you, your first love and your true love ain't your wife. It's mm -hmm. it's the game. Yeah. Don't play that long, sustain that kind of injury, have that kind of success like Shaq and Brady. And you love people around you. Mm -hmm. It's a sack, it's a it's it's a selfish. It is that bitch pride is selfish, doesn't care, will ruin everything you love. Except for the love of the game. It's a fact. It's a fact, man. Shit, man. When I heard, when I heard I that, me. I wanted to keep playing. I go to Canada. Hey, man. I'll tell you something. She left me for 18 months. And you, you know didn't why? have to share that. You did you not know? have to share that, but you did. Just so I could go to Canada and play football. Mm. The dumbest thing I ever did. Thank God you want her back. Hey. <laughs> Thank God, man, because I was eating cornbread with no eggs in it. It wasn't good. <laughs> I, ate, I oh, ate no eggs in crazy, my cornbread. Man. He goes, yep, where's the egg? I go, there's eggs that go in. The he goes, yeah, okay, all right. That cornbread fell right apart in the pan. Right apart, man. It was no good. Cornbread was terrible, man. I'm like, she, I go, there's an egg in cornbread? She goes, get out of the way. And that was how that whole thing happened. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, Brian. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes, sir, man. It's always a pleasure. You got it. We're going to talk to Mal Reese. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show.